When selecting plants for our edible landscape, we want to combine a variety of colors and textures. Consider plant form. This yucca has a very strong architecture and makes a very bold statement in the garden. Different plants have varying textures. The fine textures tend to support uh, showy plants, our accent plants. So some fine textured choices include rosemary or lavender, as well as asparagus and fennel. Now often in our ornamental gardens, we use colorful foliage to add color, such as a coleus or a Joseph's coat. But why not replace those with an edible plant, such as this purple leaf basil, or one of the brightly colored chards. We also turn to flowers, of course, when we're adding color to the garden. And many of our flowers we don't realize are actually edible. Um, this daylily is a good example of that. A lot of people like to fill the flower heads with uh, cheese and enjoy them that way. Another edible uh, ornamental in the landscape is the anise hyssop. And this agastache has a uh, licorice flavored or anise flavored stems and leaves that can be used to flavor a number of dishes. Of course, another source of color are going to be the fruits that our vegetables produce. Tomatoes, eggplants, and peppers can add a wide variety of colors to the landscape. There are a few design considerations to think about when working our herbaceous plants into the garden. One of these is drainage. Many of our Mediterranean herbs like lavender and rosemary, um, those that kind of have a silvery look to their leaves, they're adapted to really rocky, dry sites and they don't like what I call wet feet. They don't like to have their roots in damp soil, so they need a good drainage base. What we've done to accommodate for that is bermed up the soil in the location where we've planted these herbs and concentrated them in this location. Another thing to consider is space for annuals. Um, it's easy to forget about these when we're designing the garden and fill it up with our shrubs and our flowering perennials, but we also enjoy a number of annual crops. Uh, uh, for me, a favorite is basil, um, and I also have to have tomatoes and peppers in my garden. So one way I, I solve this is by leaving small pockets in the garden. Here I have a nice pocket that I left for the eggplant. Before I planted the eggplant, I could have a spring crop of peas, and I might f follow these in the fall uh, with some spinach or other winter greens. We also want to think about planting in masses. In our vegetable garden, we plant in rows, but that wouldn't look very aesthetically pleasing. So we want to kind of adopt plant spacing that we might use in a square foot garden or an intensive bed system where we give the plant a circle of space in which to grow. And that way, our plantings end up being much more ornamental and much less like the rows of a vegetable garden. The herbaceous layer is a great place to start when you're trying to transition an existing ornamental bed into an edible one. Simply replace some of our annual bedding crops, like our geraniums or our coleus, with some vegetables, like our peppers, or even an herb. Over time, we can incorporate more and more perennial crops and herbs, even shrubs, into that existing landscape. Well, we talked a little bit today about some edible flowers. We'll return in the future to take a closer look at the diversity of plants that have edible flowers. <music>